Chapter 2 Maxine Tuesday, November 20th, 1506 hours A new day, a new shift I was tired and certainly wished my days off were longer Maxine McMenamin walked from the sally port She glared at me but waited to speak until in range William Kelly She said Keegan's in the bin again IAB count number 176. She adjusted her shoulder mic, pulling some hair from the cord. They're going to hang him out to dry, and you know it. Max opened the passenger side door, sat down, and snapped the shotgun into the brace. I closed the trunk, got into the driver's seat, and tested the lights and siren. Hold that thought, lover, I said, and picked up the mic to call us mobile. 6-3 David is central, two-man unit in service, 200 on the O2, good on trauma and first aid kit. Good afternoon. I sighed and took the Redmond tobacco pouch from my front pocket. I closed my eyes, took a deep breath, and waited. He's a repulsive jerk. And there it was. She shook her body in disgust, her tongue hanging from her mouth as if gagging. That's disgusting. She said while shaking her hands and pointing at my tobacco. <sighs> okay, sweetness, I'll bite. What did he do now? She rolled her eyes at me and scoffed. <sighs> you know I hate when you condescend to me, sweetness. You and he are thick as thieves. So you're lucky you're not in there with him. Maxine was my fiance. She was breathtaking and spectacularly gorgeous, and I loved her like a fool. She had wavy, long brown hair that dropped well below the shoulder and pulled into a ponytail. She had the most incredible eyes to match and darker skin for her Irish heritage. Her body was athletic, tight, and incredibly sexy. Come on, sweetheart. I'm not that stupid, I said. Yes, you are. He'd be lying through his teeth and you'd still be swearing by him. She threw her peat cap onto the dashboard, as always. Mine was tucked safely underneath my winter jacket, spare uniform, and about 15 used spit cups from my tobacco. Do you ever even wear that thing? I asked. I hate it. But we're supposed to have it with us all the time, Kelly. Yeah? Try wearing a piss cutter for eight years. Then it wouldn't be so bad. She sighed and smiled at me. <laughs> You're an ass. And can you please speak English and stop with the Marine Corps stuff? I know, eight years of old habits die hard, but you're not there anymore, buddy. Ignoring her poke at my years of service in the Corps, I switched the conversation back to Keegan. Sweetheart, you don't know him as I do. He's one of the best street cops around. Nobody better to have at your back when it goes sideways. And it does. And you know it. She rolled her eyes with a mocking... Whatever, Prophet. Being the Prophet. It was my street name. The gangbangers tagged me with it for my ability to catch them in lies and predict the outcome of their situations. With certainty, I could project when shit would go down, somehow knowing who was involved. I teased everyone and would say my shadow sense was pinging, but it was nothing more than a cop's intuition. Sometimes, though, it felt very much like second sight. How could I explain that to people without sounding like a psycho? Oh god, I need a cup of coffee. You want one? I asked. I had a feeling this was going to be a long shift. I need gum, so let's go. Sighed Max with a smile. We pulled into the Super Wawa gas and convenience store, and I dragged myself from the RMP. I beat Maxine to the front swinging doors and held them open. She pushed past me into the store without a word. After you, lover, I said. I can't wait until July 9th. Then we'll be cocked, locked, and ready to rock. A brand new married couple. My attempt to deflect the conversation from Johnny Keegan didn't work, and I regretted using him as an earlier diversionary tactic. Though she bit her lip and winked at me, she wouldn't give up that easily. Don't think I didn't notice your clever little digs and redirection tactics. My problem with Keegan is that he treats women like crap, and you know it. She leaned against the counter as I poured myself some joe and listened. He's arrogant, he acts like he's above the law, he breaks the rules and gets away with them. And one day, it's going to catch up with him, and you'll go down with him. 
I said nothing, just listened to the radio traffic. It was busy, with other units checking into service for their shift. We smiled at each other. I kissed her forehead, and we went to the RMP. I would never admit this to her, but I admired him. Yes, he treated women like a plaything and was as arrogant as they came, but nothing ever bothered him. It seemed to roll off his back. Unfortunately, I wasn't so lucky. The time is 1535 hours, Central Operator 157, Heights Police 49, Station Number KG 49 Bravo, 63 Precinct in Service. Good afternoon. Stay alert, stay alive, stay alert, stay alive. A small congregation of uniforms gathered just outside of the vestibule. Max talked with her regular partner, Esteban Marcello, and I stood between the driver's side door and the car. I took one sip of the coffee and dumped it. The hell with it, I said under my breath. I'll use it for a spit cup. I opened the pouch and took some leaves. I was rolling them in my palm when I felt a chill, but not from the weather. On the contrary, it was a sudden and overbearing presentment of blackness. My hands trembled and my mouth turned to cotton. In an instant, I saw flames, a woman's face, and an infant. A sharp stabbing pain hit my abdomen and chest. What the hell? I fought off a rising panic. Breathe, Kelly, breathe. There's nothing wrong. You're safe. Yet, no matter how much I assured and reassured myself, that face, her haunting, high-pitched screech cut through my bones. This isn't supposed to happen. I've done everything they said. It was as if my skin stretched across my cheekbones and jaw, almost like being flayed alive. Then, nothing. It was gone. I was panting, sweating, and my hands were trembling as I finished rolling the tobacco and put it in my mouth. <sighs> Deep breaths. Move, Kelly. Come on, Max, I said. All units are in service. I love you, but we need to get Oscar Mike. She walked over to the car and looked at me through her eyebrows. Then, she pushed her jaw forward with her mouth open and glared. You've got to be kidding me. Really? Didn't I just ask you to stop with the Marine Corps stuff? Got in and closed the doors. My heart was pounding and I couldn't stop shaking. Hide it from her. Hey! She said. Kelly, I'm just kidding. Are you alright? Her playfulness turned to concern. Were you just crying? She leaned over and wiped a tear that had not yet reached my cheek. I'm fine. And, I know, I leaned over and asked for a kiss. No, she said playfully. I'm mad at you. She leaned over when I put the car in reverse and gave me a quick peck on the cheek anyway. That's only because I have to marry you, she said. But I'm still mad at you. Okay, I smiled. We're on the move. Max hit me on the arm. Ha ha, she said as she made a mocking face at me. Oscar Mike means on the move. I get it. 